Hello, everyone. Welcome to Easy English with English Fluent, the podcast for beginners and intermediate level. I'm Sarah. And I'm Mike. Today, we're going to talk about some common English words and phrases that you can use every day. That's right, Mike. Let's start with the word happy. The word happy is an adjective. It's a feeling. When you are happy, you feel good inside. Your heart feels light, and you might want to smile or laugh. That sounds wonderful. Can you give us an example of when someone might feel happy? Sure. You feel happy when something good happens, like when you see a friend or when you get a gift. It's the feeling you get when you don't have worries at that moment. I see. And how can you tell if someone else is happy? You can often see it on their face. They smile, their eyes shine, and they seem relaxed. They might also do things like sing, dance, or just look like they are having a good time. That's very interesting. Is there anything else you'd like to add about being happy? Yes, being happy is important. It's good for your health. When you're happy, you feel more alive. It's nice to make others happy, too. You can do this by being kind, sharing, and helping. Thank you, Sarah, for that simple but meaningful explanation. Now, let's talk about the word sad. Sad is the opposite of happy. Sad is an adjective just like happy, but it means the opposite. When you are sad, you feel bad inside. Your heart feels heavy, and you might not want to smile. That doesn't sound very nice. When do people feel sad? People feel sad when bad things happen, like when you lose something or someone is mean to you. It's the feeling when you have worries. Can you see if someone else is sad? Often, yes, they might not smile. Their eyes don't shine and, and they look quiet. They may cry or not want to talk much. Is there anything we can do when we feel sad? It's okay to feel sad sometimes, but talking to a friend or doing something you like can help. Remember, it's normal to feel sad, but we can always find little things that make us happy again. That's a good point. We all have sad moments, but there are also happy moments waiting for us. Thank you, Mike, for sharing with us. Let's see a conversation to understand more the words happy and sad. Hello, I am happy today. How are you? Hi, I am a little sad, but I want to be happy. Why are you sad? I lost my book. It makes me sad. I understand, but we can find it. Then you will be happy. Yes, that would make me happy. Thank you. Let's look for your book together. It's good to help. You are right. Helping others makes me happy. Me too. When you are happy, I am happy. And when I am not sad, I am very happy. We found your book. Are you happy now? Yes, very happy. No more sad, only happy. Good. Happy days are better than sad days. Yes, let's be happy every day and not sad. Next, we have the word eat. The word eat is a verb. It means to put food in your mouth, chew it, and swallow it. When we eat, we get energy from food. That's a great explanation. When do we usually eat? People eat when they are hungry. We usually eat three times a day. Breakfast in the morning, lunch in the afternoon, and dinner in the evening. Can you use eat in a simple sentence for our listeners? Of course. Here's a sentence. I eat an apple every day. It means that every day I have an apple. And why do we need to eat? Eating is important because food helps our body grow and stay healthy. Without eating, we don't have the strength to play, work, or learn. That makes sense. Is there anything else you'd like to share about eating? Yes, it's good to eat different kinds of food like fruits, vegetables, meat, and bread. This way, we get all the good things our body needs. Thank you, Sarah, for explaining eat to us. And to our listeners, remember to eat well and stay healthy. And related to eat, we have drink. The word drink is a verb, and it means to take liquid into your mouth and swallow it. When we drink, we usually do it because we are thirsty. That's a clear explanation. Can you give us an example of when someone might drink? Absolutely. For example, when it's hot outside, you might drink water to cool down. Or in the morning, you might drink milk or juice with your breakfast. I see. And how would you use drink in a sentence? Here's a simple sentence. 
I drink tea every morning. It means that each morning I have tea. Can you tell us why it's important to drink? Drinking is very important because our bodies need liquids to work well. Water is the best drink to keep us hydrated and healthy. Anything else you'd like to add about the word drink? Just that there are many things you can drink, like water, tea, coffee, and juice. But remember, water is the best for staying healthy. Thanks, Mike, for sharing that with us. And to our listeners, remember to drink water and stay hydrated. Now let's see a conversation to understand more the words eat and drink. Hello, what do you like to eat? Hi, I like to eat pizza. It makes me happy. And you? I'm happy when I eat sushi. Do you drink juice? Yes, I drink orange juice. It is good. Do you drink coffee? No, I drink tea. It is hot and nice. I am happy to eat and drink with friends. Me too. Eating and drinking together is fun. Let's eat pizza and drink juice then. Yes, let's be happy and enjoy our food and drinks. Now let's learn about go. The word go is a verb. It means to move or travel from one place to another. When you go somewhere, you leave where you are to be in a different place. That's a neat explanation. Can you give us an example of using go in everyday life? Sure. Let's say you are at home and you want to visit a friend. You might say, I go to my friend's house. It means you travel from your home to your friend's place. How about using go in a sentence for our listeners? Of course. Here's a simple sentence. I go to the park on Sundays. It means that every Sunday I travel to the park. And why is the word go important to know? Go is important because we use it all the time to talk about moving or traveling. It helps us tell others where we are going or what we are doing. Anything else you'd like to share about go? Yes, go can also be used in different ways, like go away, which means to leave, or go on, which means to continue. But don't worry, you'll learn these as you go. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah, for explaining go so clearly. And to our listeners, we hope you're ready to go and use this new word. And the opposite of go is come. The word come is a verb just like go, but while go means to move to another place, come means to move towards or arrive at the place where you are now. It's like inviting someone to where you are. Can you give us an example of when someone might use come? Sure. If you're at home and you want your friend to visit you, you might say, come to my house. It means you want your friend to travel to where you are. How would you use come in a sentence for our listeners? Here's a simple sentence. Please come to the party tonight. It means I am asking you to arrive at the party that is happening tonight. Why is it important to know the word come? Knowing come is important because it's a basic part of inviting people and telling them to join you. It's a friendly word we use a lot. Anything else you'd like to share about come? Just remember, come is about coming here to where I am and go is about going there to another place. It's simple once you get the hang of it. That's a great way to put it. Thank you, Mike, for explaining come to us. And to our listeners, we hope you come back for more lessons. Now the time for a short conversation to understand more. The words, go and come. Hello. Do you want to go to the park? Hi. Yes, I will come with you. It is fun to go outside. Great. We can go and see the flowers. I love flowers. I am happy when I go to see them. Me too. When we come back, we can eat. Good idea. I will come to your house at two o'clock. I will wait for you. We will go together. Yes, let's come back before it gets dark. We will. We always come back on time. I am happy to go out with you. And I am happy you come with me. Very good, Mike. Another important word is see. See is a verb. It means to use your eyes to notice or look at something. When you see something, you notice it with your eyes. That's a great start. Can you give us an example of when someone might use the word see? Of course. If you are walking in the park and you notice a beautiful flower, you might say, I see a flower. It means you have noticed the flower with your eyes. How would you use see in a sentence for our listeners? Here's a simple sentence. I see the sun in the sky. It means that I am looking at the sun up in the sky. 
Why is the word see important to know? See is important because we use it to talk about noticing or looking at things every day. It helps us share what we are experiencing with others. Anything else you'd like to share about see? Just remember, see is about using your eyes. But sometimes we also use see to mean understand. Like when you finally understand a joke, you might say, Ah, I see. That's a helpful tip. Thank you, Sarah, for explaining see to us. And to our listeners, we hope you see many new things today. And if you can't see something, you might need to look. The word look is a verb. It means to direct your eyes towards something so you can see it. When you look at something, you intentionally try to see it with your eyes. That's a clear explanation. Can you give us an example of when someone might use the word look? Absolutely. If you're in a classroom and the teacher wants you to see something on the board, she might say, look at the board. It means she wants you to direct your eyes to the board. How would you use look in a sentence for our listeners? Here's a simple sentence. I look at the sky and see clouds. It means that I am directing my eyes upwards to notice the clouds in the sky. Why is the word look important to know? Look is important because we use it to tell others where to direct their eyes. It helps us share what we want others to notice. Anything else you'd like to add about look? Yes. Look can also be used in different phrases, like look for, which means to search for something, or look after, which means to take care of someone or something. That's very insightful. Thank you, Mike, for explaining look to us. And to our listeners, we hope you look forward to using this new word. Let's look to a short conversation to understand more the words. See and look. Hello? Look at the sky. Do you see the birds? Hi. Yes, I see them. They look happy. I like to look at the birds. It's nice to see them fly. Me too. When I look up, I feel happy to see the sky. Let's go to the hill. We can see more from there. Good idea. We can look at the whole town. When we get there, we will see many things. Yes, I like to look around and see new places. Look, I see a flower and it is beautiful. Oh, let me see. It looks very pretty. It's nice to see you smile. And it's nice to look at the world with you. The next word is make. The word make is a verb. It means to create something or cause something to happen. When you make something, you are creating it. That's interesting. Can you give us an example of when someone might use the word make? Sure. If you are in the kitchen and you prepare a sandwich, you can say, I make a sandwich. It means you put together the bread, cheese, and other things to create a sandwich. How would you use make in a sentence for our listeners? Here's a simple sentence. I make a cake for my friend's birthday. It means that I prepare and bake a cake to celebrate my friend's birthday. Why is the word make important to know? Make is important because we use it to talk about creating or causing things in our daily life. It's a word that shows action and creativity. Anything else you'd like to share about make? Yes, make can be used in many different ways, like make up which means to invent a story or to become friends again after a fight. Or make out, which can mean to see or hear something with difficulty, or to kiss and cuddle. That's very useful to know. Thank you, Sarah, for explaining make to us. And to our listeners, we hope you make the most of your day. And finally, let's talk about take. The word take is a verb. It means to hold something and move it to another place. When you take something, you are carrying or bringing it with you. That's a good start. Can you give us an example of when someone might use the word take? Definitely. If you're at a friend's house and you pick up a book to bring home, you might say, I take the book. It means you are going to carry the book from your friend's house to your own. How would you use take in a sentence for our listeners? Here's a simple sentence. I take my bag to school. It means that I carry my bag with me when I go to school. Why is the word take important to know? Take is important because we use it to talk about moving things from one place to another. It's a word that shows action and is very useful in everyday life. Anything else you'd like to share about take? Yes, take can also be used in different phrases, like take off, 
which means to remove something or take care, which means to be careful or to look after someone. That's very insightful. Thank you, Mike, for explaining take to us. And to our listeners, we hope you take this opportunity to practice your English. You're welcome. And remember, the more you practice, the better you'll get. So take a chance and use English whenever you can. Right, Mike. Let's see a final conversation to understand more the words make and take. Hello, I will make a cake. Do you want to help? Hi. Yes, I will take the flour. We can make it together. Great. Can you take the eggs too? Sure, I will take them. It makes me happy to make food. Me too. I like to make things. It is fun. After we make the cake, we can take a break. Yes, and we can take some cake to eat. That will make us happy. I like to make and take food. Making and taking turns is good. Yes, it makes the work easy. Let's make the cake now. And then we will take it to the table to eat. Those are all very useful words, Sarah. Remember, practice makes perfect. Try to use these words and sentences at home. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. Don't forget to listen to our next episode for more easy English words. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to English Fluent. If you are enjoying our content, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring you more great podcasts just like this one. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest episodes.